Chapter 11, Back to England My goal is friendship with the world, and I can combine the greatest love with the greatest opposition to wrong. Gandhi found himself on an ocean liner once more. Now he was going back to the European continent. No longer a young student, this time he came as a representative of the Indian people, wearing a traditional Indian dhoti made out of cotton the people in India had spun all by themselves, and a pair of sandals that he made himself. He was invited by the British to be part of a conference, and his plan was to convince the British government to give India her freedom. Most of all, though, he wanted them to stay friends. This is the magic of nonviolence. Gandhi had learned when he was young, and he believed from the bottom of his heart that it was not enough to be kind and show empathy to those we like. We must also be kind and compassionate to people who are unkind and mean to us. This is how we test our nonviolence. While in England, he did something very brave. He went to talk with a group of cloth mill workers who were very angry at him because the nonviolent movement in India had made them lose their jobs at the mill in England. He spoke to them with firmness and truth, directly from his heart, about how Indian people and all people needed their freedom. The mill workers listened. They thought he would be mean to them, but his nonviolence surprised them. By the end of the conversation, they were cheering for him and the Indian people with cries of happiness. They changed their minds. They wanted the Indian people to be free, and they were very proud of gentle Gandhi for his tireless good work. Gandhi was very proud and happy for them too. In nonviolence, we try to help everyone get what they need, even our opponents, even those who don't like us. This is the path of truth. It was this spirit of truth in nonviolence that led to India's independence in 1947.